Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here. Welcome to the Spark Fun Inventors Kit version 4.1 walkthrough for Project 2. Now, at this point, you should have gone through the first video in which I talk about driver installation, assembly, and the four circuits in the first project. If you haven't yet done that, I would recommend taking a look at that video just to make sure we're all on the same page, your system's configured properly, and you're familiar with the circuits and concepts from Project 1 as we will be building upon that knowledge. So, let's talk about sound. Sound happens when something vibrates. Those vibrations cause the air around it, or water around it, or whatever the medium is, to vibrate as well. Now when those vibrations, or sound waves, hit your eardrum, you perceive that sound. Now, sound waves are measured in frequency, which is the amount of times measured per second that something vibrates. We'll be dealing with frequency a lot throughout all of these circuits, so you'll be able to look at the code and see how adjusting that frequency changes what we hear. So come on, let's make some noise. For the first circuit, we just wanted to keep it simple and get you making sound as quickly as possible and seeing how frequency can change the pitch of what we hear. So all we'll be using for this is our piezo buzzer, or piezo buzzer if you're in the UK, our old pal from the first circuit, the potentiometer, and four jumper wires. Now something I want to point out while we're putting this together. If you take a look at the back of your buzzer, you'll notice there is a plus and a minus indicating this is a polarized component, so that's something to be aware of when you're hooking up your circuit. Secondly, these two pins on the back of your buzzer are not exactly spaced to be breadboard friendly, so you'll have to bend them a little. Just be careful with that because they are delicate flowers. So we will insert our buzzer, take our ground, and we'll run to the ground line and to the ground over on our redboard. Now one thing I want to point out here as I'm wiring this, it's generally good practice when you're running power and ground to run a black wire for ground and a red wire for power. From here we'll run another black wire from our ground line over here to the other side of the breadboard because that's going to go into one of the pins of our potentiometer. We'll run the yellow line in this case from pin number 10 to the positive side of the, of the buzzer. Now this last black wire will go from one of the outside pins of the potentiometer to the negative or ground side of the speaker. Now if you recall in the first circuit we were using three wires to the potentiometer because we were getting feedback to the redboard. However, in this instance, we're simply using it as a variable resistor to change the volume. So we only need two wires for that. Now let's go to our Arduino IDE and open up File, Examples, SIK Guide Codemaster, and go to SIK Circuit 2A Buzzer. So before we make something happen, let's actually look at the code and see what we're doing. From here, we've got the integer speaker pin, so we're setting the speaker pin to pin 10 and our setup is setting it to pin mode as an output. And that's really it. And then you've got your loop, and it's showing us playing different notes. G for two beats, G for one beat, and over here it's telling us what it's playing. Happy birthday to you. So that should be familiar to everybody. But how does it know what play is? Well, if you look down here, we've created a function called play. You can tell we've created a function because it begins with a void here and it is an entire loop. So what it'll do is take a look at play and go through all of this, telling it what to do. So instead of having to put that each time we want a note to sound, we can simply write play and give it as two variables, the note it's going to play and the duration. That simple. As always, check our tools for our board and our COM port. We seem good there. So let's upload it and see what we get. And once it uploads, you should hear something. And there you go, you've played a song. Now you'll notice it stopped at the end, even though if you go back and look at the code, the void loop should continue playing forever. But right down here at the end, we have a while statement. And what a while statement does is it continues to do the same thing until whatever is in that loop changes or becomes false. So while this is while true, 
you'll notice there is nothing between the brackets. So there's nothing that can be changed. So it will remain stopped right here on the while loop because there's nothing to change. So what if we want to play the song again? Well, if you look on your redboard, you'll notice there is a reset button. Hit that reset button. And the whole thing starts again. So if it seems a little quiet, make sure your potentiometer is adjusted all the way to one end. And that'll give you the loudest volume you can get out of your little buzzer. But what if you want it louder? You could grab an old speaker you may have laying around, wire into that, and that should give you a little more volume. Look at that. So that was louder, but what if it's not loud enough still? What if you live alone or want to? Well, you could even add a powered speaker like this one. Run your wiring here. It's almost like a symphony in your own house. So now that you've seen the code and seen how we can play a song, if you're musically inclined, you may want to get a little more adventurous, a little more advanced, and change the notes, change the frequency. You can even change the speed at which it's played. So let's see what else we can do here. Change the notes, change the frequency, even change their speed, and then upload that and see what you get. Ah, just as Beethoven would have wanted it, buzzy. So if you take a look at the frequency chart, you can see the frequencies I've listed out for all keys on an 88 key piano. Now take a look at the A above middle C right there. It's bolded and that frequency is 440. So that is vibrating 440 times each second. Now 440 is the musical tuning standard by which musicians set A above middle C. Now I know some of you music nerds out there are gonna tell me that many orchestras like the New York Phil and the Boston Symphony Orchestra and the Berlin Philharmonic pitch a little bit higher than that, but A above middle C is meant to be tuned at 440. If you're not good with that, please send your complaints and hate mail to the International Organization for Standardization. But I digress. Let's move on to circuit 2B. In this circuit, we're going to add three buttons to build a trumpet, if you use the term loosely. Now, up until now, we've used analog inputs, which are capable of a wide range of inputs. However, we're going to digital, which only have two options, on or off. It's either a one or a zero. Uh, think of it as a light switch. A digital input is a light switch. An analog input is a dimmer switch. So for this circuit, we're going to add three buttons. and six jumper wires. When you're installing your buttons into the circuit, you'll want to jump them across the center line of your breadboard, and they will only fit one direction. The pins are a little bit wide, so you'll want to use a little bit of finesse when installing these. So follow along the guidebook and hook up your circuit. I don't think you need to watch me do it. All right, let's open up our code and take a look at that. This one is SIK Circuit 2B, Digital Trumpet. So here in the beginning, we define the first key pin, the second key pin, and the third key pin as pins two, three, and four on our red board. And our buzzer remains in pin 10. Once again in the setup, we set our pin mode to input, but you'll notice here it says input pull up. 
And what that means is that sometimes there will be a floating voltage which may alter your pin and give you a false positive or a false read as being pushed. The pull-up simply holds it high until you push the button. Our buzzer is once again an output. Now here we have if statements. So if digital read, now it's reading a digital pin for our button, if it reads low, which means we've pulled down by pushing this button, then the first buzzer pin will play this tone. Same with number two, else if it reads the second pin, else if it reads the third pin, else no tone if no button is being pushed. And down here again, we have a list of our frequencies. So let's upload this and see what we get. All right, once it's uploaded, we'll make sure our volume is all the way up and start pushing buttons and see what happens. Look at that. And there you go, three notes from three buttons. But what if you wanted more than three notes? Well, there are a couple of ways you could do that. You could rewrite the code with some if statements or use binary math. Take a look and see what you can do with it. Now let's move on to our next circuit. Do you want to play a game? Well, all right, first we have to build a game, but then we get to play a game. The game we're going to build and play is called Simon Says. If you're not familiar with it, basically there are four buttons and four corresponding LEDs. An LED will light up, you push the corresponding button. Then that one and a second LED will light up, you push them in sequence. That will continue for, in this case, 10 rounds. Now, if you match the sequence for all 10 rounds, you win and should be celebrated and carried around on the shoulders of your peers. So let's see what we're gonna to do to put the circuit together. We'll have to add a fourth button. We'll add four LEDs, corresponding colors to our buttons. Now, as we learned in our first project, we'll need to add resistors for those LEDs. So four resistors, and then an additional six jumper wires. All right, let's put this together. You'll notice I'm not using jumper wires to go from the LED's ground pin to our ground line. In this instance, we can use the resistors and simply take those from the ground pin of the LED into the ground line, saving us some jumper wires and mess. Now, if you've built the circuit correctly and you still have the trumpet code loaded and the board powered, you're going to get this annoying sound the entire time. I think I just figured out why we put a volume knob on it. There we go. All right, let's open up the code and take a look and see what we've got. Opening up the Simon Says code, you'll see there are a lot of new things to look at here. We've set our buttons, but instead of setting each button separately, we're using an array. We can do that by calling our integer button and then giving it these brackets. Then we can tell it that two, four, six, and eight will be our button pins. Immediately after that, our LED with the bracket can be set to three, five, seven, and nine. And then we can set our tones. Since we have four buttons, each with only one tone, we can set our four tones right here. We've got integers for how many rounds to win and our button sequence, which will be predicted automatically. Our buzzer pin, once again, 10. Now pressed button equals four and round counter equals one. We've got our start time and our time limit set at 2,000 milliseconds, which will be two seconds. That'll give you the amount of time that you have to push each button in sequence. And our game started will begin at false. Here we've got our pin mode, setting our buttons at input with pull-ups and our LEDs at output. And again, our buzzer pin is an output. Now here's where things start to get crazy. If we look in the loop, we'll see the first thing is if game started equals false. And what that tells us is if the game hasn't started, it'll flash the start sequence, reset the round counter, and wait a second and a half. And then the game started will go to true. So the game has begun. We've got a whole lot of things going on here, but here's one I want to point out. Start time equals millis. We haven't seen millis before. Millis tell us how many milliseconds have passed since the last start of the Redboard or the Arduino. And that'll help us keep track of time, especially on timed things like this. And if you look down here, we have a whole lot of functions declared. 
And again, each one of these make life simpler in our void loop. So let's upload and see what we get. Now, once your code is uploaded, you should get several flashes of your LEDs, and then the game should start. And apparently I've lost already. Don't forget to adjust your potentiometer so you have sound. Now, the game will start once you push any button. There we go. Simply match the sequence. And if you get through 10 rounds, you've won. If not, you lose. So there you are. But what else could we do with this code? We could speed it up a little bit. Rather than a two second delay, make it a one second delay. Or if you really want to get crazy, have it speed up a little bit each round over the 10 rounds. Or you could go completely out on a limb and figure out how to make it a two player game so you alternate turns. What? Well, there you go. So in this circuit, we've worked with sound, but we've also added lights and we use digital input, put all of them together. Next time, we're going to work on motion and add that into the mix. Can't wait to see you then. Until then, happy hacking, friends.